Hi everybody, it's Mr. D and in the middle of Mr. D1 at blogspot.com and this is part three of my series, How to Build Your Middle School Choral Music Program. Part one was about uh, the kids, part two was about the teacher, you, um, and part three is about the parents. And these are all ideas that have worked for me and for me those are the trifecta, the most important pieces of the puzzle. I'll share many other things I do, but the parents are, uh, are a key component. And I went in this order on purpose because the experience in the classroom, the, what, what experience is the kid, are the kids having on each day in your classroom? Is it a positive experience? Do they want to come back? The things I talked about in the first video. And then what are you doing to nurture your spirit? And um, are you teaching the things that you really want to teach? Those are the things I covered a little more detail in videos one and two. And then when those things are going well, then it's easier to elicit the parent support that you need when you need volunteers. Like my program is 340 students. That's a lot. I can't do it by myself. There's only one of me. So I had to figure out ways to uh, reach out and get the help that I needed. Um, this helps also in behavior as well. So uh, the number one thing that I do is at the beginning of the year, I collect all of their email addresses, everybody who's willing to give them, and I create an email list, and the email list says parent of Avery Brown, or whatever the child's name is, so that when I need to reach that specific parent, I can type into my Gmail, parent of Avery Brown, and the name pops up, and I shoot the email out with ease. I also put them in groups, second period, third period, fourth period, fifth period, sixth period, um, so that I can send an email to all the second period parents if I need to. And then I can group them all together if I need to send a mass chorus email. Ease of contact is so important. Telephones are hard. People nowadays don't want to talk on the phone. And when you think about picking, and not that I don't do that, I do do that as well. But we need ease of execution in the email um, or whatever the communication is that we're using for our primary communication. It's gotten so digital, so readable. People are using email. They're using remind.com, which I also use. And that's an easy thing to use for parents, and I'm moving in that direction with my all of my contacts because you just send something home to the parents in your syllabus, and you tell them how to sign up, and they sign up, and it's very easy. Creating the massive email list, it takes time. Uh, now, I've gotten a lot of parent support, um, and I now have parents do that for me um, in the beginning of the year, but it, in the very first several years, I did it all myself when I started using email as my primary way of communication. The emails are great because I send out emails and I ask for volunteers when I need them and I can utilize the parental expertise that I have in the community. Not all the parents volunteer. They're busy. They have lots to do. I don't have the richest parents in the world. I don't have the poorest in the world. I have a combination of everything. Um, I, I have. That's why I love my school because I have such a combination. But I appreciate that parents step up when I send an email um, and ask for an individual task to be completed. For example, I do ask for a small task and large task. One large task is Coral Librarian. I have them come in and load and unload my um, folders, music folders, at the end of the nine weeks when I'm starting new music and keep the library. And I try to get one person to do that so that it's consistent for that year. I ask for uh, parents to help with my musical. For example, I'm terrible at costumes and I'm terrible at sound and um, I do hire some people to do many of the aspects of my musical but parents are able and they enjoy a lot of them uh, coming in and doing costumes because they love it and they have jobs maybe that are not in that area but perhaps they have a theater degree that they've not used and then they come in with something fantastic. I've, I have uh, had a parent in the past who was a physician and, uh, and then decided not to be a doctor anymore and they decided to uh, raise the children for a little while and then decided to become a teacher uh, and so during the before she became a teacher she was just she was helping a lot with my show and she was doing tremendous amounts of work that I could not believe and the the level was so high and you know that's not always the case I mean I also have parents who come in for something very um, much less time consuming like uh, chaperoning a single field trip or coming in on the night of the show when uh, um, when I have a Christmas uh, event, a holiday event, or, um, or maybe the musical, and I'm having 340 children check in. I, I uh, ask parents to come in and man stations so that I can have their uh, have the check-in procedures done well, and I give them instructions for that via email. Um, I certainly use the phone, but it's just less and less, I've noticed, over the years because people are less willing to pick up the phone these days and because I noticed for myself that when I tried to pick up the phone and call, I would just avoid it. 
uh, because of the time related. And with an email, I put parent of whoever the child is and it pops right out to them. Now, of course, there's the difference in parent communication via email and phone. If it's a sensitive matter, it can come across uh, you have to be careful with your language, but we are all getting better with that over time. And for me, the ease of execution with the parents that I created with my email lists and my remind um, made me willing and able to receive so much more from the parents in terms of volunteering and that sort of thing. And I use a lot of parents for a lot of things. The relationship that we build when they receive those emails and when I share with them, I can send an email to a second period and say, your children were awesome today. They did these things. And those relationship building techniques are huge and they help you um, just uh, in every way build everything in the community that you need to have a successful program. Because parents talk, we all know that. They talk to each other, they talk to their neighbors, they talk in their churches, they talk to the elementary school peers that they're sending their children with. Which course should I take in middle school? Should it be X, Y, or chorus? And these things uh, are the relationships that you're building with the parents that you're currently teaching with uh, their children, you can help yourself build so much as you move forward uh, in your future program. Uh, building that relationship in the community is huge with the parents. So I hope that gives you some ideas um, about what I do with my parents that might uh, translate for you. All right, have a great day.